Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, in this video I'm going to build another uh, cartridge for the Commodore 64 and uh, the one I'm going to build is uh, this one, uh, Impossible Mission. This is the PCB I'm going to use and I uh, got this from PCBWay. Let me just take a moment here and thank my sponsor PCBWay who supports this video. If you are a hobbyist like me and you like to build something, then you should uh, try out PCB Way. They have a very nice service for producing uh, already made PCB designs, either from their shared project sites or if you have uh, designs yourself that you want to upload and get the instant quote. They have very affordable prices and they have a quick delivery times. Besides that, they also do services like 3D printing and CNC machining. And right now they have a Christmas festival with discounts and different special offers. So go ahead and visit PCBWay.com. Impossible Mission is uh, by many considered one of the best games for um, the C64. And uh, it is this um, labyrinth uh, type of game where you go around and solve uh, different uh, tasks and it also features some speech synthesizers. So here's a few clips from the game. No, this cartridge by itself is uh, pretty uh, simple. It has uh, one EEPROM, one 74LS02 and one 74LS273. And I got them all here, so um, we are ready to do the soldering immediately. Here's the part, and uh, this time I'm gonna use a socket in case I do something uh, silly with <laughs> the EEPROM, that can happen then I don't have to desolder it afterwards. But for these two chips, I'm gonna just solder them in because uh, I trust they are okay. These are brand new chips. So I'm gonna start with these. The legs are always a little bit wider than um, the actual uh, <laughs> holes. And uh, yeah, you sometimes need to bend it a little bit. I just lay it on the side like this and bend all the pins at the one go. Yeah, that's like it. Make sure the notch points in the same direction as the notch on the silk screen. Then it's just a simple job of soldering all these pins. And we all like a little uh, soldering session, don't we? Yeah, that looks good. I didn't use any additional flux because this is a brand new uh, PCB and the solder tin I have is uh, leaded. It's uh, very good. And now the socket and um, yeah, probably not a good idea to use a socket in these uh, types of cartridges because then I might not fit a case around it, but uh, this won't fit the case anyway, I think. So. I just hold it down to the board with some uh, blue tack gum. If you use a leaded solder, I think it's a good idea to wash your fingers after you're finished with the job. All right, the last soldering session here.
And we're done with the soldering, just a little bit of uh, cleaning with some alcohol. Yeah, and all the solder looks okay. So now we actually need to find the game ROM to install on this uh, cartridge. And uh, you can of course uh, Google and search, but there's a lot of uh, fake sites out there that actually contains uh, exe files and things like that that uh, has uh, viruses so be careful but if you go to pcb way and actually search for um, the impossible mission pcb there's actually a link down there where you can download the rom and uh, i already did that and uh, it's already converted to um, a bin file uh, which is the format you need to use uh, to burn this rom this time i'm gonna use a wind bond and it is a 27 c512 this is uh, those um, Erasable uh, EEPROMs that you can use uh, several times. And the 512 EEPROM uh, means it's uh, 512 kilo bits, not bytes. So divide it by 8 and you have a 64 kilobyte uh, EEPROM. And the bin file I downloaded is uh, exactly 64 kilobyte. All right, so now I'm in the XG Pro uh, programming software for the burner and uh, now I'm gonna find uh, the correct chip. So uh, let's uh, just search for it. And here comes a list. You can uh, type the manufacturer or you can type the actual uh, the name of the chip, which in this case is uh, W27C4. 512 and it's a dip 28 package so now we can actually try and uh, read this and see if uh, it managed to uh, read from it so it read and uh, detected uh, everything seems to be okay read device information error okay forget about that <laughs> all right so now we can load uh, the file And we just leave everything as uh, default here. It's a binary file. So here we see the actual uh, byte codes for the EEPROM and uh, that is uh, program code for the game. And you can actually go in here and change things if you wanna personalize uh, <laughs> your game. Like if uh, there are some texts and anything like that you can find that you can change. But I'm not gonna do that now. Well, so now we are ready to uh, program this. I'm just gonna hook off this check ID checkbox here, detect the pins and erase before and verify after. Hit the program button. Oops, that actually crashed. <laughs> Isn't the chip uh, properly in? No, seemed to be something wrong. I'm just gonna unplug it and uh, insert it again. All right, I unplugged the USB cable and uh, inserted it again. Probably some issue with the computer. Yeah, seems to be working this time. Nice. Verified and programming succeeded. All good then. The chip goes into the socket uh, the correct way with a notch to the notch and uh, yes we are ready to test and hopefully this will work. Here's my very nice looking Commodore 64C and it is running a Jiffy DOS still. Are you ready to test? The machine is watched by my two homemade Santas and uh, yeah. Just gonna insert it. Dang. Alrighty, that worked. <laughs> nice. Well, it's not that hard if you have an EEPROM uh, programmer like I do. You can find uh, all kinds of PCBs uh, yeah, for sale and you can build them yourself or you can even design them yourself. The, <laughs> the circuitry is not complicated at all on some of these. Okay, we have to take it for a spin. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Let's try once more the scream. It was quite a low volume. Uh, <laughs> probably this uh, seed chip is uh, starting to get old. <laughs> All right, that was it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the, the content and as usual, thanks to my supporters at patreon.com. See you. Bye bye.